Hello YouTube, this is Skating for Satori, and today I'm going to share with you 10 points of advice for the average middle-aged skate dad. I started thinking about this over the past few weeks when I've been asked on several occasions by younger skateboarders or other parents what I do to be able to skate with my son four to six times a week. I have to preface this by stating, as I do in all my videos, that the opinions shared are of my own and by a very mediocre skate, middle-aged skate dad who started riding the skate park at the age of 42 and I came into skateboarding later in life. This is especially after 30 plus years of martial arts training uh, and I went through some pretty intense training from the time that I was nine years old. So I already had a lot of wear and tear on my body coming into skateboarding after appearances in four national championships and three world championships during the peak of my competitive kendo career. This video today is really for dads like myself that want to skate with their kids or miss the opportunity to skate the parks when they were younger and catching up on lost time. As I was putting this list together, I also realized that a lot of these things I'm about to share with you today are really common sense advice on middle-aged health and could possibly cross over to other endeavors that dads engage in. Moreover, I would probably be given the same points of advice if those, this was a kendo video to provide middle-aged dads advice on starting to learn kendo in their 40s and 50s. Okay, so without further comment, here are the 10 points of advice or recommendation. Number one, don't smoke. So I quit smoking cigarettes in September of 1999, and I feel that it is the best thing I did for myself. I think that there's obvious reasons for quitting smoking. There's the risk of heart disease, heart attack, risk of cancer, uh, nicotine addiction, and also uh, smoking's effect on blood pressure, and also just general wear and tear on the body. Personally, from an athlete's perspective, I feel that my blood circulation is better, and I'm not struggling to do the same things with my heart having to work harder, or I'm getting winded or tired more easily. And I feel that when I do need to take a break, I feel that I can get back to skateboarding or whatever because I feel my body's recovery is faster and much more effective. My second recommendation is don't drink, or if you do drink, drink moderately. I think there's obvious reasons for not drinking. If you drink a lot the night before, it's going to be hard to skate well if you have a hangover. Also, by not drinking, I think it, for me at least, it cuts down on a lot of the wear and tear on the body. And then also the body is not going to feel as dehydrated. Also, uh, things like your skin will clear up. And then also, I could also be an expensive endeavor too. So at a certain age, I think you probably wanna drink stuff that tastes better, right? So, you know, typically you're not gonna be 45 years old drinking Keystone, unless you really wanna drink Keystone. You're gonna to wanna to have better and tastier beer, wine, and spirits, which cost a little bit more per bottle. Like personally, I like beer, especially craft beers, uh, and there's so many good ones out there these days. And also, I like smooth drinking beers like uh, Modelo, Longboard, and Maui Brewing that, have a, that go down easy and taste really good after a summer skate session. But beer tends to be very high in calories along with the alcohol. So I noticed that after several hours on the weekend, skating uh, several hours on the weekend, I'd come home, I'd pop open a beer, and then one beer became six and sometimes up to 12 while I was like barbecuing, resting, and trying to stay cool in the summer. So anything that I burned off during skating, I ended up putting it back on sometimes more in the form of these empty calories. So I've quit drinking alcohol since January 2018, and definitely my body feels better and I'm not worried about being hung over or struggling to get up and go skate that second or third day, like on a Saturday or Sunday. Um, also, it's helped out with my blood pressure and also easier to control my weight. So I no longer have these fluctuations going between 170 to 185 anymore. My third recommendation is to exercise regularly. And I engage in three other forms of exercise outside of skateboarding. So number one being stretching and doing yoga. So I believe that my longevity in the martial art of kendo and now skateboarding resides in my continual stretching and yoga. 
I stretch or do yoga every day to help me maintain my flexibility. And I've made it a part of my everyday routine. So I try to set aside 20 to 30 minutes a day, especially if we're going skateboarding. Or I incorporate stretching intermittently throughout the day, maybe three to five minutes at a time. For example, like while I'm waiting on hold or the few minutes like before a Zoom meeting starts where it's too early to join the meeting, but then it's not enough time to get some work done. So then what I'll do is I'll take a three to five minute break and stretch before the meeting. I would also like to recommend that uh, engaging in another form of like aerobic or cardio exercise, such as like walking, biking, or running. So I walk about a mile a day, sometimes two to three miles. And so if you're not used to walking, maybe you can start small and like do things like park your car further away and then walk to like the supermarket or the office or some the mall or something like that. Another one is option is that you can just walk up and down your street. So if you're not feeling it or you're kind of tired, you get tired, then you can just turn around and walk back to your house. Personally, I try to set aside about 20 to 30 minutes uh, around lunchtime and I do a one mile walk. And then sometimes when I'm busy, um, I realize that one lap around my block is about a half mile. So what I'll do is I'll set the timer and work for about 50 minutes and then I will go and walk around the block one time. And then just if you do this several times a day, then the distance adds up. The third form of exercise uh, that I would recommend is to engage in some type of form of strength or resistance training. I would recommend going to the gym or even doing bodyweight exercises like push-ups, sit-ups, and pull-ups. And by engaging in strength training, I think it makes the muscles and the entire body stronger to endure the rigors of skateboarding. And then also, I'm not an exercise physiologist, but I think that strength training is not just about building muscle mass, but also to exercise and strengthen the muscles, especially around the joints. And by exercising the full body, I think that it improves heart health and also metabolizing muscle energy and performance. And also keeps our joints flexible and also possibly strengthens the tendons that support the muscle too. If you make your body stronger, then uh, your condition, conditioning is going to be better, stamina and endurance will be up, allowing you to ride the skate park longer. So personally, uh, I've been working out by doing circuit training on uh, the Bowflex machine and hitting all the muscle groups several times a week. And then also I change it up a little by doing uh, kettlebell workouts. My fourth recommendation would be to think about nutrition. So be mindful of the food that you put into your body. And my key takeaway for me after turning 50 was the metabolism of food and how it transitions and translates to your performance the next day. Now, some people are lucky and not affected, uh, but for myself personally, if the night before I eat too much or some food that's not so easily digested, I'm not going to feel 100% the next day. And, you know, we all know that one individual, whether it's in skateboarding or other sport that can eat a whole combo pizza by themselves, drink and smoke all night, get three hours of sleep, wake up at seven the next day and then destroy the skate park or just smoke everyone at practice. Unfortunately, I'm not one of those people. And as I've aged, I realized that I needed to start eating more moderately. There are times when I still have a big appetite, but I've noticed that I can't put plates of food down anymore like I did even in my 40s. So these days I actually enjoy eating slower and taking in more smaller, more easily digestible meals throughout the day. I'm not a nutritionist, but through the years as a competitive martial artist, what I did was I studied and learned about nutrition and how the food categories of proteins, carbohydrates, fats, and vitamins, how they work, and the types of nutrients that would be contained within certain types of foods. And that I translated that to help me with my strength, stamina, endurance, and recovery. My recommendation would be to try eating healthier by doing your own research and trying out and finding what works for you. Myself, I try to eat as healthy and diverse of a diet as possible. I try to eat plant-based as much as I can, 
but I still eat meat, fish, and poultry in moderation. And this is so that my body is used to eating a variety of whole foods and I can fun still function without getting out of whack because, you know, if there was some meat or animal-based fat that got mixed in with my vegetables. So, like, as advised in Laird Hamilton's Force of Nature book, um, I try not to be too temperamental with my diet and food intake. I just try to eat he as healthy as I can. So that way, if I have to eat like an airplane meal or a hamburger or burrito from the food court, it's not going to put me into toxic shock. And I just try to be more like a diesel engine. So if a little water or impurities get in the fuel, I'm going to be okay. And, you know, we've all seen that dad at the airport or on vacation that's freaking out and taking out his frustrations on the hapless food court employee or even his family because there's no healthy plant-based alternative. So I don't want to be that dad. My fifth recommendation would be to think about hydration. So I also try to stay hydrated throughout the day and the daily recommended fluid intake is about 3.7 liters for men and 2.7 liters for women. So each person's hydration needs will differ when skating and also depending on maybe environmental factors. Obviously when it's hotter, you'll need to replenish fluids more frequently than when skating in the winter time. So to give you an example, when we go skate in Hawaii, where it's on average 80 degrees and very humid, we're losing water through perspiration very rapidly. So in one session, I think we're losing about probably three to five pounds of water weight. And we're drinking, I think about one uh, 500 milliliter bottle of water every 20 to 30 minutes. Whereas I have a tendency to drink about one bottle, one of those bottles over one to two hours during the winter time. The usual beverages that I drink uh, when I skate are as follows. So in the morning, what I'll do is I'll create myself a drinkable breakfast uh, in the form of a bulletproof coffee. So that consists of two shots of a Starbucks espresso, uh, some grass fed butter, and then also coconut oil. And then I'll mix in a little bit of artificial sweetener with that. And then uh, I will take that with one multivitamin gummy and also one Costco Super B complex vitamin with electrolytes. And with this combination, I notice that I can skate for about three to four hours, no problem without uh, getting hungry or cramping. During the skate session, um, what I do is I just continue to drink water or sometimes coconut water. And then in the summertime, during like really especially hot sessions, I will allow myself to drink Gatorade, uh, but only when I feel like I'm losing electrolytes quickly and I wanna keep the calories up. Um, Keep in mind that Gatorade is 80 calories per 12 ounces. So that 20 ounce bottle that you buy uh, is going to be like 140 calories, which is the same number of calories as a can of Coke and contains a lot of sugar. So just something to keep in mind. And then also after the skate session, uh, I continue to drink water. But sometimes uh, what I do is uh, I will also drink like LaCroix or some other like sparkling water. Uh, like I mentioned uh, earlier, I like to drink beer, so having a non-alcohol, zero-calorie drink has, and one that's carbonated has definitely helped. My sixth recommendation is to think about rest, relaxation, and meditation. So with respect to rest, um, just remember to get plenty of rest, uh, especially if you're going to go skate the next day. It's amazing how much a sensible meal and a good night's sleep affects how you feel the next day and affects how you skate. Make sure to get rest when you're tired to support your body's recovery. Rest is also supported by things like uh, good recovery meals, rehydrating, catching up on sleep, and also sometimes engaging in active rest activities. For example, going on a walk or going for a swim during a rest day from skateboarding. Another aspect is relaxation. So uh, I think it's important to remember to take time to engage in activities that bring relaxation to you and also your mindset on skateboarding as well. So remember, we're doing this to and skating to bring relaxation into your life. So try to relax and enjoy the fun and the freedom and experiencing the stoke and sharing the stoke of skateboarding. So what good is it if you're all stressed out trying to learn a trick 
or you get upset that you or your child is not skating at a certain level or progressing or forcing your kid to skate and try things that they don't want to do or may not be ready to do. So I've seen that countless times over the years and it just takes the stoke out of skating for both the parent and the child. Other relaxation activities that maybe you can uh, engage in as a middle-aged skate dad that will help you with your rest and recovery can be things like taking time off to take a hot bath or sit in the hot tub or to go get a massage or go see a chiropractor. That will definitely help you with you know recovering your body so that you can continue to skateboard. And let's talk about meditation. So one thing that is I think is often overlooked in skateboarding is breathing. Um, I try to take a few moments each day to engage in meditation and just sit quietly and focus on my breathing and concentration and mindfulness. And meditation can be used to calm oneself or get into the right mindset to skate or possibly to get focused on a trick. And then if you do it enough, I think it can also be a tool for introspection into oneself. My seventh recommendation is to be mindful and in tune with your mental, physical, and emotional condition the days that you skate, and then make a conscientious decision whether you want to push for progression, do an expression session, or just cruise. But whatever session you decide, make sure that you ride within your abilities and your limits. In addition to riding within your abilities and limits, I also think it's very important to be mindful of your age and also physical limits and also mindful of your physical condition on each of the days that you go skate. If you have any doubts, then start slow, get the heart or the body warmed up, but do it slowly, getting the heart rate up a little bit at a time. And so for like myself, sometimes like my body doesn't feel warm or uh, sometimes my heart doesn't feel right. So then what I'll do is I'll take the first 10 to 15 minutes of the session and I'll just, uh, you know, kick and push around the skate park. Or sometimes I'll just even walk around the skate park. Or, you know, I'll grab the broom and dustpan out of the car and I will clean and sweep the park first before padding up and then uh, starting skateboarding. I also want to take one uh, moment to share this advice to parents, especially if you are in your late 30s, 40s, and 50s. And if you're just starting out or even coming back after a hiatus of X number of years, and perhaps you're even a talented skateboarder in your teens, but please keep in mind your age and physical conditioning. And the goal is not necessarily, I think, to reach that high level again or reach the same level you were at before. I think that you would all agree that the goal as a middle-aged parent is to be able to keep doing this with your child or children and do skateboard as a family. So I've seen dads come to the skate park and you could tell they used to be really good, uh, but they in their mind are still 17 but don't realize that it's been 15 to 20 years since they last rode and now they're 20 to 50 pounds heavier and so their muscles are not as elastic anymore and a slam takes longer to recover and i've seen so many try tricks they did when they were in their teens only to slam real bad or tear a muscle or ligament or in one case, I've seen one dad snap their Achilles. And the crappy thing about that is that, you know, in the nine years of Justin's journey, I've never seen any of them come back. So it really sucks for the kids because, you know, I could tell that they were really starting to love skateboarding and coming to the skate park with a parent or their dad. My eighth recommendation would be to be mindful as well as not mindful of your skate park riding environment. And what I mean by that is this. Try not to be too self-conscious. Everybody's at the skate park for the same reason you are, which is to have fun. So whenever you go, there's going to be a different levels at the skate park from beginners to pros, as well as a wide range of people uh, of different ages and backgrounds and attitudes at the park. And sometimes it may seem like people are watching, waiting for you to eat it. It's not usually the case. And, you know, most of the time they're focused on what they're doing 
and keeping an eye on you to be situationally aware of who is riding what at the skate park. If you do feel self-conscious uh, or you don't feel comfortable riding around other people, then you might want to consider changing the timing of your skate session. Usually the earlier in the day uh, that you go, uh, the more empty it is, the skate park is going to be, especially on the weekends. And then also to be mindful of what's going on at the skate park and your comfort level, you might want to consider leaving the skate park or sitting down and taking a break if the particular skate session starts to get busy or overly aggressive or just sometimes just it just turns into a circus. And that's when it's just best to just like, you know, sit back and then take a, take a break and then go back in when things calm down. One key thing that you want to educate yourself on is learning the skate park rules and skate park etiquette. So there are written as well as unwritten rules at the skate park. So uh, there's a lot of videos on YouTube to educate yourself. I would advise you to learn them. And then also stay away from other riders that don't know or choose not to follow the skate park etiquette. At 51, a lot of times I am one of the older, if not the oldest person at the skate park. However, I don't even notice or care anymore. In fact, sometimes as the elder statesman at the skate park, I use it to my advantage by taking a senior discount when the younger ones say, go ahead, sir. Or I join the rotation and then every, eventually I notice that everyone will go ride somewhere else because no kid wants to ride the skate park with someone older than their parent or possibly even their grandparent. My ninth recommendation would be to get a quality helmet, pads, and proper gear. So I've seen so many dads not wearing helmets or they wear to the skate park the wrong protective equipment that usually consists of an ill-fitting bicycle helmet, these paper-thin knee and elbow pads, and then the, their usual golf shorts, and the New Balance dad shoes, you know, and you know which ones I'm talking about. Those white ones with the blue trim and the calf high tube socks. What I would recommend is to get a quality helmet and pads. So for helmets, I'm a little bit biased, but my recommendation is S1 helmets. And S1 is the helmet that saved my son's life. And S1 helmets uh, are CPSC or Consumer Product Safety Commission certified helmets. That means it's been tested and certified to a certain standard where the helmet is designed to reduce the impact and dissipate g-forces if you hit your head. I know that wearing a helmet is a personal choice but I've made it my choice to wear one and I've never regretted wearing it especially because I need to provide for my family. So there have been times when I slammed unexpectedly on smaller stuff and really smacked the back of my head uh, in the bowl. And it's made the difference of being shell-shocked for a few minutes versus you know, getting a major concussion. For knee and elbow pads, uh, my recommendation would be 187 killer pads for knee and elbow. Um, I know that there's a lot of videos out there on YouTube for reviews and feedback on these, but I've worn them for eight years now. And for me, it's just been a good investment in quality equipment that has lasted me a long time and has kept me safe. I also wear wrist guards and the ones that I use are made by a brand called Pro Design. Uh, I also wear knee gaskets underneath my knee pads and the ones that I use are Old Bones Therapy. My skate shoe of choice is the Vans Half Cab. I've worn, also worn those for eight years now. And then uh, the shorts that I wear are Dickies Multi Pocket Work Shorts. So I buy them off of uh, Amazon. They're cheap, they're durable, and they last a long time. And uh, they're very thick, so that keeps me safe from road rash. I know that there's a lot of videos out on YouTube about how to select the proper skateboard, but let me just speak to this point uh, for a minute. Um, my opinion, but to enjoy skateboarding, you're going to want to ride a setup that you're going to that is going to ride well, meaning something that rolls and turns correctly so that you can enjoy riding and progressing on it. 
If you're going to ride the skate park, my recommendation would be to visit your local skate shop and get their recommendation on a quality skateboard that based on your price point, your ability, and one that is built to ride today's modern skate parks. They may even advise you on what type of setup to ride for a particular park that you intend to ride. Also, I don't recommend to purchase something from the department store like Walmart or Target or off, off of Amazon unless you really know what you're getting. I also don't recommend to try and ride the skate park with one of those penny or other plastic toy boards. Another thing I've witnessed over the past few years is the aspect of nostalgia and guys my age coming straight from the skate shop to the skate park with the 80s reissue board that they just bought. And that euphoria and stoke of riding that same skateboard that they had in their teens and trying to recapture their youth from 30 plus years ago, it seems to really quickly evaporate and I've seen so many guys my age struggle to ride even like the smaller bowls on something from the 80s, like say for example a Caballero Dragon and Bats board with 80s wheels like Ratbones or Mini Cubics. And I've noticed it becomes a recipe of frustration and sometimes pain and suffering as one, they haven't ridden since the 1980s. Two, they may have little to no experience riding the skate park or a modern skate park. And then three, they're trying to ride a board that they rode as a teenager in the 1980s, but it's now 2022 and they're a full size adult and they weigh 30 to 50 pounds heavier than they were at 17 and trying to ride a board that's maybe nine and a half, ten inches wide and that but it's still under 30 inches long and these boards have short noses and long tails with wheelbases over 15 inches and also very little concave and they're using it to try to ride a modern skate park so on some occasions uh, I've asked them if I could try their setup, and I myself have struggled to ride the bulls and have given it back in one or two runs. So just food for thought here. Um, I think there's a reason why Hawk, Hosoi, Caballero have moved on to modern boards and modern equipment versus continuing to ride the 80s shapes. So just a food for thought there. Along with the proper safety equipment, it's also important to learn how to fall. What I mean by that is learning to sense when something is not right and bailing out is important. So it's always better to take the bail over the slam. And I think one of those is to learn how to instinctively knee slide. Uh, and it's a very important skill to have. So I would recommend practicing it as it's not a natural reaction or motion. And, but it will definitely keep you safe and scrub off that uh, kinetic energy built up from speed and preventing you from slamming. Think of it in terms of a glass bottle. So if the bottle comes down straight or tumbles, the glass will break and shatter because the energy goes through the glass. But if the bottle, even if it just kind of slides or rolls a little bit, then that energy dissipates and the bottle remains intact. And that's where good pads and knee gaskets come into play. My 10th and final recommendation today is to keep in mind the long game and set your primary goal to have fun. You can progress, but also you want to do this as long as possible. So for myself, I try to remind myself and for, don't, don't forget that to me, my personal essence of skateboarding is to experience freedom and have fun. Through skateboarding, inspire and be inspired. So consider this, if you're 40 plus and at the skate park riding with your kids, or you guys are having an OG session and you know having laughing and having fun, look, you've already won. What you're doing is inspiring others, including parents and the public. And in return, I'm sure that you get inspired by seeing others do things on that skateboard and doing amazing things on that skateboard or doing a personal best or an NBD. Recently, I was inspired by a gentleman. His name is Mr. Yoshio Kinoshita, an 81, an 81-year-old 
Japanese skateboarder who started skateboarding at the age of 79. And this guy rides the skate park every day and can do things like drop in and do rock fagies on, on the skate park ramps alongside teenagers. And so if you think about it, that's my current age plus 30 years. One additional thing that I like to ask you to keep in mind is this. Every once in a while, stop and take a look around and see if there's any other older skaters riding the skate park. And also, how many other parents are riding the park with their kid? In fact, most can't do what you do. 99% of the parents drop their kids off and take off, or they stay in the car, or hang out on the sidelines. On some occasions, I've seen some parents never looking up from their phone because they're too busy swiping left and right while their kid is riding the park. And these are the better situations. There are some kids whose parents aren't even involved with their kids skateboarding or even their life whatsoever. And in some cases, it's really sad for me to say this, but some kids, I've never seen the parent come out even once to watch how talented their child is. So really enjoy the time that you have the health and ability to skateboard. Skate with your family, skate with your children or child or children, and also skate with your friends and also talking and getting to know a very diverse group of people in your community. Sure, it's pretty cool when you learn a new trick or skating really well, but even better when you have the opportunity to share the stoke with the people around you and create those memories. If you have made it all the way to this point of this video, first, thank you very much. But one last thing I wanna share with you is to please keep in mind that this is just one opinion and also not to be construed as medical or prof professional advice. I'm sure that through experimentation, you'll find what works for you and for what you're seeking out of skateboarding. Hopefully, these 10 points of advice and recommendation will give you the opportunity to continue enjoying the fun and freedom that skateboarding brings as it has for me. I'm grateful that skateboarding has allowed me to have a relationship with my son and something that we connect as a family and also with the community. I'm truly enjoying what I call my second childhood and making up for the not being able to ride a skate park when I was younger. At my age, it gives me the stoke and something to look forward to. And honestly, skateboarding has made me feel alive. So. Thank you very much for watching and allowing me to share my experience and opinions with all of you. And I hope to be able to ride with you at the skate park sometime in the future. Thanks for watching.